All right, so I want to start with um, question tips. All right, how to actually uh, answer questions whenever you are actually doing questions. Um, one thing that I like to really emphasize is that think of each question as a real patient. I think if you do that, it'll just make it easier and just kind of have a visualization. Okay, you're seeing a 35-year-old female, you're seeing a 65-year-old female or you know, 55-year-old man, you know, two-year-old boy, you know, and so forth. You want to always think of it as a real patient. That'll just make it easier for you uh, down the road. And other thing is look at the big picture of everything. Okay, what, you know, am I looking at a, a neuro case? Am I looking at a endocrine case? You know, if I'm looking at um, an acute case in the emergency room, you know, what's going on? You know, look at the big picture of everything. Um, and also one thing that um, I'm going to be emphasizing in the class when I start medical terminology is know your terms. You know, don't skip terms. For example, if you don't know what one definition is, look it up. Don't skip it. You know, understand that definition. Uh, and, you know, so then things don't kind of accumulate uh, in the questions because what typically happens is whenever you answer a question, it could be a concept issue or it could be a somatic issue. You know, maybe you didn't read it properly or maybe you just didn't understand the concept and that's kind of how you break down questions and also organ systems you know understand the organ system is it is the question coming from the heart um you know heart, I mean, sorry the cardiovascular system is it coming from the uh you know the um integumentary system um and so for re, you know is it coming from the nef coming from nephrology and so forth so understand uh based on an organ system now Sometimes you'll have to combine things, but kind of understand, okay, are they, is the patient coming in from, for respiratory symptoms? Is he, she, is, is he or she coughing? You know, what's going on? Um, and also know, know, what, a, what, know uh, what, what a symptom versus a sign is. Um, and this is one of the biggest things that took time for me to understand. Symptoms are basically experienced or observed by the patient. So whenever a patient goes to the doctor because of symptoms, uh, you know, they say they have a headache or nausea or vomiting. Um, and then the physician will listen to the, you know, symptoms, uh, which are basically signs to the physician. So basically observed by the physician, which leads to a definite diagnosis is basically a, a, uh, is a sign. Okay. So they definitely know that. Um, and, and I think that'll kind of make things easier for you as well. And then also, whenever you see a question, kind of know the format of the question. We're going to be doing a few questions uh, in a little bit, but know the formats. You know, they, whenever whenever a question is presented, you know, they start with a history. You know, they have a history of presenting illness. Uh, then they have a physical exam. You know, for example, they check the heart. They check the lungs. You know, maybe they check the skin and so forth. And then they do labs. You know, labs, you know, they order a TSH. You know, they order a T4. And then imaging comes and then surgery. So it's, this is, it's usually a typical pattern like this. History, physical exam, labs, imaging, and then surgery. Um, and if you understand that format, uh, whenever you answer questions, that'll just make things a little bit easier because you'll know what you need to do on the next step. Typically on the step one, they typically will give you history, physical exam, labs. So you'll see imaging as well. Typically they don't do surgery, but then whenever you move on to the other exam, they'll typically have surgery as well. All right, so let's... And then other tips I can mention is that, you know, whenever you look at a scenario, is it an acute case? Typically, acute cases are typically less than four weeks. Is it a chronic case? Has this patient been having this disease for a long time? Also, note the age of the patient. You know, if it's a young patient versus, a, you know, versus an older patient, that will really give you a big differential diagnosis. It'll, it'll, it'll definitely change your differential diagnosis. Um, and for if something is extremely vague in your in your uh, question, always go back to your physical exam findings um, or your uh, lab and imaging uh, description because a lot of the a lot of the answers are in the labs and also the physical exam. Um, it might not even be based on the presentation. Um, and also, you know, one thing you want to do is uh, one thing I've noticed in all these USMD exam is. They give you typically two to three clues that will lead you toward the answer. Um, sometimes, and then they'll give you a bunch of distractions as well, but then 
if three, I'd say three, I'd say about three to four things kind of lean toward one way and then one thing leans another way, go with the three to four things that lean one way. Does it make sense? So, you know, if three things okay are going toward, for example, um, diabetes, you know, go, you know, I'll go, I'll pick an answer that says diabetes. And one thing actually says, oh, going toward like, um, let's say something autoimmune. Well, it's probably more, more likely going to be diabetes. Um, and then also, um, I think, yeah, I think that's all I want to mention right now because the other stuff is more step two related. Okay. So I think let's get started, uh, with, with the first question. And, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically break down the question and, uh, and then I'm going to basically talk about the disease within the question. Um, and then we'll go from there. One thing that I typically do is, um, whenever I see a question, so this is, First of all, this is a typical USMLE question that I actually got when I took the USMLE. Um, and they typically have your answer choices at the bottom and then you have your whole clinical scenario. Uh, one thing that I do even before answering the question is I actually scan the choices, just kind of take a quick peek at the choices, you know, to see what's kind of going on. Um, and then I also, I also, I actually also read the last sentence. So the way I do it is, okay, what is the most likely diagnosis? Okay. And then I always, re you always want to rephrase that last sentence. You want to be like, what are they actually asking me right now? You know, and in this case, they're asking for the most likely diagnosis, meaning what is this disease? What is, you know, what is the, what is this disease? So you make it into it, make it very simple as possible. Um, and then I start with the top you know, with the, with the, with, with the last question in mind, I say a 40 year old woman presents with constipation and severe abdominal pain. Okay. So that's what they're coming in for. Okay. She noticed these, noticed these symptoms for the, you know, since the last six months ago, but then just said, oh, it's, it, it, you know, so this is chronic. It's, you know, it's been going on for a while, typically greater than a month is more chronic. Uh, they've been progressing since then. So they've been getting worse. So that's one thing you always ask whenever you take a history. Is it getting worse? Is it getting is it getting better? Well, it looks like it's getting worse for her. You know, her family also noticed changes in her behavior, particular moodiness. So she's having some, you know, maybe some psychiatric psychiatric stuff going on. Uh, her pain is described as severe burning sensation uh, that is worsened by fasting. Okay, so she's having something, you know, in her stomach. So there's something going on there. Um, and then she's tried over in antacids, which really didn't do much, you know. So typically, uh, you know, this could be a GERD type of presentation, but typically GERD will go away with antacids, but it's not really helping her at all. So something else is going on. So then, you, you know, you see the labs over here. And one thing I'll recommend is that um, if you can memorize certain lab values, that will be very helpful. So then you don't have to keep opening up uh, the lab sheet on the exam, they'll save you a lot of time. So typically in this question, they've given it, given it to you. Sometimes they will give it to you, but sometimes they won't. So you have to memorize, always memorize sodium chloride. So it looks like sodium is normal. Chloride is pretty much normal. Potassium is normal as well. Bicarb is pretty much normal. And then you, now the calcium is increased. So that's something to be aware of. Typically calcium is between 8.5 and 10.2. And then phosphorus is low. So that's kind of important to know as well. Um, typically when the calcium is increased and the phosphate, the phosphate is usually low as well. So patients, and then it says patients who undergoes the upper GI endoscopy, which reveals a, uh, a severe, severe. So they did some imaging. This is, this is your imaging right here. So they, that's your, 